Hey there, welcome to the Drawing Codex. If you want to design and draw your own characters, or perhaps characters from your favorite video game or comic, there's a number of challenges that you're probably going to face. There's obviously the concept of anatomy, but what I want to talk about in this video is how do we design and implement costumes and other things that make up the character. If you looked at a lot of how to draw books, the ones that I am often recommending and talking about on this channel are the Andrew Loomis books, Figure Drawing for All It's Worth in this case. We have this concept of creating a mannequin, but this is for a very, very standardized male or female anatomical model. And it's really just there for learning. But I've been in lots of situations where I've had to essentially modify this mannequin. And I've talked about that as well a little bit on this channel. How do you make large characters, small characters, and fantasy characters? But one of the things that often makes up character is what we wear and what your fantasy characters wear, what your sci-fi characters wear, what your post-apocalyptic characters wear. What they wear makes up who they are, their choices, and also just the visual design language. So what I want to do is a drawing lesson where we discuss specifically how we build up the mannequin, where we have our little stick figure that sort of represents the basic, most easy and effective way to initially draw the figure. But how do we add clothing to that? How do we add accessories to that? And how does that relate to the way that characters feel and how easy and fun they are to draw? All right, welcome again to the Drawing Codex. On this channel, we're all about drawing cool stuff from our imagination, embracing the challenge of drawing, and mastering the craft of line and color illustration. If you want to learn more about line and color illustration, you can check out my free quick start guide. It goes over all the basics that you need to get up and running quickly in Photoshop and I talk about how to go from the thumbnail to the finished product and just focus on what is the simplest, most easiest, effective way to actually create illustrations in the line and color style. Go check it out. Link will be in the description. This idea of creating character through costume is, I think, really important. When I was learning to draw, I really put a lot of emphasis on anatomy. And to me, that was the major stumbling block that I was trying to achieve and overcome. Uh, how to draw anatomy, how to draw the muscles. And I think coming from a Western comic book fandom background, where a lot of the stuff that we see is basically naked people with, you know, latex suits on. And there's not a lot of extra stuff there. But... In many cases, I think those characters are sort of interesting, but often the ones that I was actually more drawn to and was more interested in were video game characters. You know, characters like you would find in Street Fighter. You can see from this book, Capcom Design Works, there's a huge variety of sort of interesting characters that, you know, get created for video games. And what I sort of found is that, you know, even when I was doing my, my own comics, uh, when I was sort of, you know, drawing my, my first sort of pirate comic, there was a lot of ways where just being able to draw the figure, right, or a figure um, just wasn't really enough because I'd be trying to pose the character. And be, if we just think about it as this is the basic anatomical version that sort of fits everything. It's kind of true. The proportions that you can learn for one character can easily be used to pose all characters. But often when we're drawing, we're not just trying to draw the sort of uniform mannequin, the uniform ana anatomical person. We're often trying to draw a specific character doing a specific thing. And in that instance, I'd often find that there'd be very, very specific little things that would make a character look like the character needed to be. So if we take a, in, in this instance, we've got, uh, if I get that in focus, we've got, you know, the pirate here uh, in the red um, sort of cloak um, coat, and that's Jack Hyde. And, and he is one of the, the big bad pirates in this book, which is essentially a um, sort of a, a an adaptation and uh, unofficial sort of sequel to Treasure Island. But the trick is often how to get him feeling 
like he should, where he has that sense of grandeur. And a lot of that came down to his hat, right? And the specific way that his costume was put together. It's a mix of the things that I did when I was designing the character that I noticed really gave him the feeling that I needed to give him. And so what I do is just kind of start always adding those elements to the character. And I would make sure that every time I drew them, I would put those in. And that would immediately give me a feel for like what the character is actually going to feel like when the finished drawing is completed. Now, the problem with just adding all of this stuff to your characters, obviously, that it takes time. And if we think about drawing as an iterative process, what we want to do is get the most effective, efficient way to gauge what the character is going to look like in the end. And we want to be able to do that as quickly and easily as possible. So that's where the idea of the mannequin comes in and where we have the combination of these ideas of character, costume, accessories, plus an easy to draw version of that. And this is something that, again, I found a lot drawing comics and also, you know, just sort of designing characters as well and, and understanding how to build out these things and simplify a lot of the accessories that I would put on, a lot of concept design and other things that I would draw. So I think it's a really, really important little nuance of the drawing system, of the things that you will do day to day, especially in comics, especially when you're trying to or represent fan art or create something where you know what the character needs to be, but it's more than just anatomy that makes them who they are. It's super important to be able to get this right because if you can't pose them with a good understanding of what their costume is going to be like and you don't know what's going to make a difference and what's not then it's really really tricky to give them those classic poses to get the character feeling right to make sure that you're actually getting the most out of that character design it's very easy for you to design a really really good character that has some interesting shapes interesting forms interesting ideas there but if you don't know how to pose that to get the most out of it to design so the shapes that overlap the natural patterns that are created by the interesting design that you've created if you don't know how to make those come onto the page then you're never going to be able to get the most out of your design or someone else's design so let's jump over to the drawing table and we'll dive in a little bit more and i'll show you how i tackle this problem all right here we are at the drawing table so just to illustrate this point as much as i can if we look at that Seven Pirates book that I did design, there was a lot of characters in there. And what I found is that most of them were very, very standard anatomical versions of a human. It's obviously stylized. It's obviously in my style. But we can use most of what we would learn from a typical anatomy book. Oh, this guy needs his arm glued back in. You can learn pretty much everything you need to know if you're drawing a relatively realistic story. And in this case, that is very much how it is. This book was basically a unofficial sequel to Treasure Island, as I said. And all the characters are just normal characters. There's no fantasy characters. But there are characters that are taller, shorter, rounder. Um, younger, skinnier, etc. So there's a good range of proportions in there. And when I designed them, I tried to make sure that obviously there was a good sense of character design. So all of the characters have quite distinct features. None of the beards are the same. Not all of them have the same height or um, general shape to their anatomy, you, you can kind of tell them apart in most cases. That was the goal. Even just if you're looking at a face shot, I wanted to be able to easily see from the overall shape design who is who. So that's obviously important. And that's a big part of what you will do if you design your own comic book characters or if you're wanting to draw from some fan art, right? So you want to draw some Street Fighter characters, which I often use as a good example because that's something I know. Or it could be, you know, something more stylized like some Mega Man characters, someone from that universe where everything's a little bit simpler. 
Either way, the goal is to make sure that you understand the design. Just because you drew it doesn't mean you understand it, okay? You would imagine that's the case, and I would have imagined that's the case too. But I actually would often design characters and say, hey, that looks cool, that's a really good character design. And then I'd go and try and draw it again, and I'd fail. I'd be like, oh, that doesn't actually look like they should be. Here we've got the younger version of Long John Silver. And again, this character is very much just a you know pretty standard human but there's a lot of specifics that make them feel like they should we've got the scarf we've got the general appearance we've got the attitude the posture the fact that um, he has a peg leg right and all of those things go into it but I would design the character and I felt like that was a really good character design and it suited my purpose uh, but yeah when I go to draw it, it took it's it took time it took it was a challenge to actually figure out how that worked so the concept of having a character design either that you're looking at that you like again something you're a fan of or your own is very much the same uh, you have to figure out how to draw that if you need to draw it again and again it's an important distinction and I think it's really worth mentioning that so I spoke about the concept of the Jekyde character the the bad pirate guy in this book and again it took a long time to figure out how best to actually represent him and just quickly redraw it now this is going to be more important if you're redrawing the character again and again and you need to make sure they they're sort of easy to draw but even if we're just dealing with a fairly realistic normal humans normal proportions sort of thing you do need to really figure out what makes the character look and feel like the character. Now, when I drew the Ara book that I created, there were other problems. In that book, there were a number of creatures that are obviously very divergent from a natural sort of human proportion. Maybe not overall, but there certainly is a, a strong deviation from just that kind of standard powdered wigs pirate book we have a character like the maluk character who has very very sort of divergent monster anatomy we had a lot of these forest creatures that were completely different um and again it, the, the trick is how do we pose them and get them looking right it's sort of a, a normal human there but there's a way they move and there's a way that their um, costumes make them feel like they do so there's a range of challenges that you're going to have. And I think one of the most important things is just to understand that when you're drawing those mannequins, we need to add stuff. So let's look at Ara as a good example of this. And we'll see how much time we've got to, to go over other examples. But hopefully maybe if we take a few characters from the Ara book, that'll allow me to explore that concept. There's probably another video in the simplicity of how you actually do separate out character designs when you are creating a wide variety of um, characters for a book or a project. That's its own problem. Figuring out how to get the faces to look iconically different to the other characters so that you, you can sort of tell them apart and also make sure that they're consistent over time. That took me a long time to figure out as well. And the solution was not always uh, what I thought it would be. But I think for the costume side of it, this is probably a really good way to explain how this works. So if I take my standard Ara character there, she is essentially just uh, an elf girl. And in that case, what I'm going to do is just draw her as having standard human anatomy. So again, just roughing this in and trying to get a mix of structure, gesture. As I often say, what is the most effective, easiest way to kind of pose the character? So this is the, the basic mannequin, and the more you get into the character, the more you get really specific about 
the exact anatomical markers, right? She probably has quite um, sort of like a skinny frame with wide shoulders, right? She has that sort of athletic uh, build. Um, if you're drawing a smaller character, like the Sen character from this book, then she's going to have slightly narrower shoulders, for instance. And you can work that into the base anatomical thing. But the reason that we need to add costume is often just that when you're designing your little poses, we need to get a feel for where there are going to be tangents and other complicated things happening. So the major elements that she's going to have is a belt and there's going to be a sword. And so from a mannequin standpoint, the sword can literally just be a line. It's just a matter of figuring out where that sword goes on the character. Now I'm visualizing the fact that there's a belt around here and that there's probably some kind of sheath for the sword. But all we really need from a mannequin standpoint is just the line. It just tells us where that is. Now the other thing that she has is the cape. And this is where, again, actually you know, a, a little bit of form drawing here will go a long way but and by that I mean the more that we could plan exactly where that goes the better but all we actually really need I found was just to represent the the way that it the way that the hood wraps around so if we think about this from a from a structural standpoint bump bump Right, here we have a character who is going to represent Ara. Boom. And we've got a torso. Going to be about there. Got a center line somewhere around there. Shoulders. Boom. So what I'm trying to do is represent where... this hood is. So we have a hood that is a fur lined hood and that is part of the costume. So if this cape was falling down, that's where it would be. So what I'm trying to get is a feel for what, where that is, roughly. And again, it can just be rough as a basic mannequin, but this tells me a lot because often what you find is that there are intersections and graphic intersections that are created when we have the face, we've got the hair framing the face, and then we have the, all of that interacting with this cloak. So if we look at how that often plays out, we see that every pose has a different way that this is going to play out. Every pose has a different way that these things will interact. So in this case, it's going round, going from behind that we see it in these ones. Her hair is falling down here. And what we get is an interesting series of overlaps that we're trying to control and design. So typically we've got the fact that her ears are these big elf ears and they're going to stick out over this fur lined coat. So getting the little tangents and things there right is important. And if we have our little mannequinized way of doing that, right, so I'm going to add the ears just as little little things to sort of give me an indication of where that's going to go, then that helps. Again, a similar way, if it's at this sort of scale, that I would think about where those horns are going to go is, again, just as little lines that are going to indicate where that's going. The other thing that will obviously be important is the cape and that might be something that is spinning around. Again, you know, if we have a uh, a wind or something like that, you know, moving the cape, then it's going to be flowing around here. So depending on what's happening, 
these things are going to be important to draw anyway, and they're actually really going to enhance how the character feels. The reason superheroes often have capes is because it's a great way to show motion. And again, that's something that I often add to my character designs because it's just so true. Uh, when I started out again, I felt like it was kind of a bit cheesy, but I have found it is really, really useful to have something that might have motion. Hair is a really good thing as well, or even just little straps or things that will be picked up by the wind or something, or will also give you an indication of where gravity is in the frame. It's just a really, really easy, nice way to add motion and movement to a static shot. So that's often why superhero designs have the cape is because, uh, well, first off, strong men, I think, uh, you know, that were based on that Superman sort of idea, had the cape and, um, you know, so there's a reason for it there, but essentially people keep adding it because it's a really good, easy way to, to show motion. Um, obviously Spider-Man doesn't have a cape, for instance, and you have to work really hard to make him feel as if the pose is sort of interesting, uh, which again is, 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 is sort of a good, um, another good example of how you have to work really hard drawing something like Spider-Man to make sure that the character feels like the character. Everyone gives him those classic Spider-Man poses, for instance. Whereas when you have more of a costume, you don't have to do that as much because you, you have other things that are going to indicate that. Anyway, this is a good example. Sorry for the, the sort of random tangents, but again, a lot of these things mix into each other. The, the, the reasons and the, the, the decisions that we make uh, designing costumes and the effect that it has on our sort of enjoyment and the process of drawing, etc. So here we have, again, the basic things that I would add for the Ara mannequin. And the last one is this little pack on the back. And really this is just something that is designed as a nice little silhouette pop. So it just creates a bit of interest. And it's just her little travel pack. It's the things that she's got there. Some kind of stick that's kind of wrapped up here. And then just probably maybe an extra change of some clothes, maybe some food, some things to light a fire, maybe some extra knives, supplies, other little bits, and there would probably be a blanket or something there. So again, there's some rationale for it, but from a design perspective, the thing it does is gives us a little silhouette pop and shows us some nice depth. So we have the depth of the, again, we've got the face, we've got the hair, that's going to come down, then we're going to have the overlap of the fur-lined hood, and then we got this thing at the background. And so it means we've, you know, we've often got like five or six things overlapping each other, which gives us that sense of depth. So we've got, again, fur-lined coat is uh, overlapping the, the skin, and then we've got the hair is overlapping that, then this comes around and overlaps that, and then this overlaps that again. These things seem really, really simple, and this isn't a character design lesson necessarily, but it's important to understand why we put these things on characters, why the characters have their designs and how they function, and how important it is to get the character to have the level of complexity and the feeling that they need to, even if it is just a very, very simple character, right? She's a simple character design, but it's really important to add those things at the mannequin stage. Now, the rest of it, for me, will kind of fall into place. There's obviously a couple of extra bits and pieces, depending on which version of the costume that you gave her. But to me, these are the things that are going to be really key to posing the character and making sure that all of the important things will work. If you do have other major elements of clothing that are important to you that you find are going to be sort of challenging to place, then you would just place them in there as well. For instance, if we're drawing the version of her where she has sort of larger pants on, again, it really is just a matter of indicating a simple version of them. And what you'll find is with a few lines, you can block that out. This is going to be important because what you see is we've got this sword. This sword is essentially coming behind, see if it's on the cover. Yeah. So 
on the cover you can kind of see it might be a little bit dark but there is a sword here and it goes behind and it's uh, essentially just going behind her like that what you often need to do is handle these intersections and tangents so if I draw the pants on then that's going to help me to gauge hey where should this sword go should it go here because if I put it down here then that means that the tip of it is just going to stick out behind that leg and that means again I've got more things overlapping each other which generally just gives you a more dimensional feeling to the drawing the more overlaps you have the more depth the more solidarity etc so that's what I would do for the Ara character the rest of it to me again is I think gonna fall into place those are the important things and the more that I play with them the more that I can get a feeling for how they're gonna work for instance if we're just drawing that character from the side in a profile view then what we can do is just add those and see how that's gonna look so if we think about what we've got for that it is a simple profile view of essentially a female character as you increase the fidelity of what you need to draw i.e. as you draw something closer up you probably need to plan things a little bit more I'm still going to be very rough with it here but thinking about where the nose might go uh, blocking that in thinking about where that eye patch will go putting in a slightly more detailed ear and putting in a slightly more detailed indication of where that horn is going to go will help let's complete that gonna have shoulders around here Rip cage is going to be around here. So this could be even if we're, you know, if we just think about we're drawing a panel or simple illustration or whatever you want. What I want to do is think about where those extra bits and pieces are going to go. And in that case, I've got fur-lined hood which could go anywhere this is where we can place it with a simple line as long as I need as long as I know it needs to be there then I can start to think about that or what you might also want to do is think about the sequence that things are going to be placed upon there because if we get them right then it can be easier to lay one thing on top of another thing in this instance what I might want to do is put on the backpack that she has because that will allow me to think about where this fur lined hood would go etc etc so that really is all we're trying to do as we complete and add things to the character that little simple mannequin will make more and more sense so here I'm moving beyond the mannequin and just placing the rest of those things on there again some kind of earring and you could obviously finesse the features but it's all based on where that mannequin goes and you can see that I can problem solve at that really early stage just with where do these big shapes go where do the what's important to place on first and how do I get this to give me a plan that I can build upon so that's the that's the basics of how this works now it's very similar to the concept of primary form
where we think about drawing first the biggest, larger shapes, except what we're trying to do is indicate not necessarily form, but character. And when we're dealing with a mannequin or our stick figure, the character really is the gesture, the feeling, the pose, the posture. That's what's important to that character. And it's primary character. You could almost sort of call it. That's what we're drawing, right? It's not primary form, although as we build upon that, we do, as I was showing, build up those primary forms. It's primary character elements. Now, what I want to do is just show the Maluk character, who is uh, this guy, who is also like not not the best character, not the most uh, nicest character from the book, um, because he has uh, even sort of more exaggerated posture, and he has a couple of things that I think also really, really help illustrate this point. So let's do that quickly, but hopefully you get the basic idea here for how this works. And really, it's not more complicated than that. It's just a matter of you thinking what is important for a character. Now, what I might do instead of making this a really, really long video is maybe do some additional videos where we break down existing characters because I know a lot of people are really interested in the concept of fan art. It's not been something that I'm terribly interested in over my career is drawing other people's characters. I mostly like designing and drawing my own stuff. But I think it is really, really good to study and try and think about what makes the characters that we like good. And that'll maybe help you design your own good characters, um, good character designs. So that might be something that I can do. Again, let me know if you've got any um I guess ideas or favorite characters you'd like me to break down and we can sort of maybe apply this same process and look at how one might break down a character that you're a huge fan of and help you draw it effectively. And again, not just from a, like copying it from two dimensions, but understanding it in three dimensions and also being able to pose it and feel like you can emote through the character. The real key to this is that if we boil it down to its most simplest elements where we can kind of see how the character looks and we can feel the design at this early stage, it allows us as artists to act through the character much more effectively. If you have to wait until you finish the drawing of a character to tell whether it has the right emotion, then you find that it's harder for you to actually put the right emotion into the pose and the feeling. And you can see that the pose of all these characters is quite specific to their personality type. And that's so important to the way that people appreciate these characters and understand these characters and become fans of these characters. So this is really important because it allows you to connect deeper with the characters that either you design or that you really like. Okay, so let's look at that extra character. And there's actually some good concept art that sort of shows the character a little bit better, or at least some of the early design of the character. And again, this is something I could sort of maybe talk through, um, you know, do some extra videos on, talk about some of the challenges. But this is a great example of a character that I designed and I had a lot of trouble implementing in the actual book, figuring out how to make it feel like this initial sketch. So I think, again, it's important to understand even professional artists who've been working, you know, at this point I'd been working for, for 10 years and still I was designing characters and, and sort of tr having trouble figuring out how to actually implement them and make sure that they had the right feeling throughout the book. But basically the character of Maluk is very, very similar to um, a normal human except see if we can get a good a good posed version of it here's probably a good little kind of posed version of it except he obviously has those kind of animal shaped legs and he has a real hunchback he has a real sort of slouch to him like an animalistic sort of slouch that is very very important for his character so let's look at that from the basic perspective i won't pose these too much because again, that just takes extra time and I think detracts from the overall point. But here, if we think about what makes up that character, 
we have the same mannequin except in this case what we need to do is think very carefully about where right where the spine is along the character and he has quite a long neck so again if we look at this from the side i'm i'm thinking a little bit more about the arc that needs to happen here and you see you know in in many cases i use this similar kind of arc for a lot of characters in uh, books that i design because i understand the essential mannequin it's it's a lot very similar to a lot of the animal characters i designed in pinocchio i've designed aliens for video games using a similar sort of mannequin it is actually quite a common um alteration to to the human figure so that's what i'm trying to do here so we've got the head right and then this is coming around here and then we've got these and then you can see that got some legs that are going to come out here and then sort of go like that and he has quite wide shoulders as well but they kind of tend to hunch down a little bit right we're sort of emphasizing this hunchback and if we sort of think about again doing a pose where he's got the sword above his shoulder might have something like that so just being able to pose that we can see this is being sort of foreshortened We got to remember these limbs that he has are, are quite long. So we're going to have something like that again. Probably take me a couple of uh, hours of sketching to really get a feel for you know exactly how to sort of get him working again. Because again, it's uh, a lot of this is muscle memory, but you got to reawaken the muscle memory. So what we've got for this character is similar thing to what we had with Ara. We've got a, okay, so here's my center line. Here's where the ribs are. Think about where the collarbone would be. Again, I'm not putting them in from a mannequin standpoint. I'm just putting them in to illustrate where the character is. But we're going to have the same hood, basically the same design for the hood. I was being efficient slash lazy with that. So thinking about where it goes, and then he has a very similar sort of pack. They come from the same organization in the story. So there's a reason they're kind of meant to look and feel a little bit similar. But that's basically what we're dealing with from a mannequin standpoint. We've got the same thing, right? We've got a shoulder here. And then character has a cape. Now, the things that you would probably add to this character is in addition to the costume and other things we could add to the costume would be the pants could maybe be added. Now, it's it's mostly just important to get a get a rough feeling for where they're going to be. I'm not trying to draw them. I'm just trying to say, hey, if, if we sort of put more mass there, that changes the way the character feels, obviously. All right, got the sword there. Now, the other things that he has is obviously much, much longer horns. And these are things that will make the character feel a lot like the character. This drawing's gotten a little bit rougher the smaller we're drawing the, the the easier it is to kind of keep things simple but 
One of the tricks here, as I said before, is to ratchet up the level of fidelity that you probably need to calculate based on the size of the pose. So because this character, the drawing is physically bigger than that other little R character that I was drawing before, um, I'm needing to figure out a little bit more stuff because it'll be more important to calculate some of that dimensionality. What we need to add is the features that specifically make this character look and feel like they do. And that is his jutting jaw and the horns. And this to me is super important and a great example of how this can really help. So it kind of has some horns that go like this. Again, it's a, I'm not going to draw them exactly like they are in the book I'm just going to sort of do a rough version of it but they're somewhat similar to this now you can see instantly that changes the feeling of the character and the other thing that I would probably add is just that jutting jaw right it doesn't have to be crazy but we can see that this is a very blocky simple version that now starts to look a lot more like the character. Things that I would find make a huge difference here were also just some indication of where the hair is going and obviously there's some ears as well. So as you get more and more complicated with the character design there's more of these things you need to add but Part of the process is simplifying it. So you can see that because I haven't drawn this character for quite a while, again, it takes me a while to kind of feel it out and find it. And that would be the case the first few times you tried to analyze and design down a character to get a good mannequin from them. It's a process that you go through. As we get more and more efficient, you figure out what are the key components that make up the character. And that really is... The thing you need to figure out. What are the key components? If you figure that out and you can really simplify it, it makes it easier, more effective, and you can act more, as I said. But this is the basic idea. How do we take the mannequin, extract the key components, and make sure you've got a nice, simple way of drawing your character. He would obviously have a couple more things. You can see that he has a couple more belt items there that he's carrying around and he also has a sword that needs to kind of probably go a little bit further there. And so again what we do is just get better and better at figuring out what these things are where to place them and if you are working on a project this is something you can work on you don't need to get it right straight away it's something that you develop but it's important to understand because otherwise you might run into a lot of the other problems that I faced where initially I would just kind of try and draw the character and I would find that I would either struggle and, and deal with a lot of problems just sort of trying to I get lost in the details essentially which is something we often do as artists Whereas thinking about it this way of mannequin plus uh, key components, key things that are going to make the character feel right, uh, allows me to get back to some of that um, sort of gestural work. And it can often unlock some of the problems that you might find, again, if you're getting lost in the details or drawing a character that's just doesn't look right, uh, even though you're drawing all the things that you should. And I think the other problem that we can do is you don't actually get to breathe and live through your character because you can't draw them quickly enough. If your character has all this stuff on them, right? Like, a, again, a bit of a silly design to do. Lots of horns and things. It's quite a complicated character to draw, actually. Probably something I would redesign if, if I were to do it again. But... Um, it, it's often a matter of being able to, you know, not just struggle to draw all the details there, but actually get to a point where you can act and have fun with it. Again, the more fun you have and the more you connect up your emotion and the, you know, sense of you actually drawing these characters as real people, the better this will be. Anyway, that's all I've got for this one. This is a simple idea, but I really, really wanted to illustrate it and talk about how important I think it is, but that's all I've got for now.
catch you around. Happy drawing.